Hello everyone, Dan Mahalik here, pastor at Cook Street Pentecostal Church, and I am so glad that you are with us today. God bless you. We welcome you on this first day of Advent, in fact, as we are moving into the Christmas season. And in just one moment, I'm going to invite Greg Brown. He's going to come and have our first Advent reading and prayer to begin our season off. And so I'm so glad that you're able to join us today. And so, Greg, will you come and uh, start us off? Thank you very much, Pastor Dan. Good morning, church. Good morning. This is the first Sunday of Advent. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Thank you. Those who live in the land of the deep darkness, on them light has shined. For a child has been born. For us, a son is given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders and he his name, Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. The Gospel of John speaks of Christ as the true light coming into the world. In the commemoration of that coming, we lit candles for the four weeks leading to Christmas and reflect on the coming of Christ. It is significant that the church has always used the language, the coming of Christ, because it speaks of a deep truth. Christ is coming. Christ is always coming, always entering a troubled world, a, wondered, a wounded heart. And so we light the first candle, the candle of hope, and dare to express our longing for the salvation of soul, for the reconciliation of peace, for healing, and the well-being of all creation. Let's pray. Loving God, as we enter this Advent season, we open all of the dark place in our lives and memories to the healing light of your peace. Prepare our hearts to be embrace you and to transform by you that we may walk in the light of Christ. Amen. Thank you, Greg. It's actually a fitting reading for, um, for this season as we consider, as we consider the, the world around us and the despair, I suppose, and the concern that people are facing. You know, as I think to the Christmas season, we realize that God remembered us in our darkness, and so Jesus came, the light of the world. And so thank you for reading that this morning, Greg. God is good, and he loves you. And this morning, we're going to have Andre Shander from Mission Partners International with us speaking. And it won't be in person. He's uh, sent a video, and so you'll see that online in, in this room. You'll see it up on the wall. And uh, he's going to be sharing a good word as well as uh, giving us an update on what is going on um, in the Ukraine as we support uh, Andre, Shand, Shaders, and Julia and their family. So there's Andre Shander presenting and Andre Shaders, who is the pastor in the Ukraine. It's very confusing, but uh, it is what it is. So, um, and then I'm going to wrap up right after the video with a few words and time of prayer. And so I'm going to read the story to which he's going to refer to in the scriptures Mark chapter 4 it will be on the wall behind me here. And it's the story of Jesus calming the sea. So why don't we read it together? Mark chapter 4, verse 35 to 41. It says this, As evening came, Jesus said to his disciples, Let's cross to the other side of the lake. So they took Jesus in the boat and started out, leaving the crowds behind, although other boats followed but soon a fierce storm came upon them. High waves were breaking into the boat, and it began to fill with water. Jesus was sleeping at the back of the boat with his head on a cushion. The disciples woke him, shouting, Teacher, don't you care we're going to drown? When Jesus woke up, he rebuked the wind and said to the waves, Silence, be still. Suddenly the wind stopped. And there was a great calm. Then he asked them, why are you afraid? 
do you still have no faith? Or as it says in Luke 8 and 25, where is your faith? The disciples were absolutely terrified. Who is this man? They asked each other. Even the wind and the waves obey him. So Andre is going to uh, carry on with his report and uh, sharing on this text. And there's going to be a lag between the online video and this room. So you might notice online that there is a we'll be right back slide. And uh, we will be right back momentarily at that moment. It'll take a brief second to switch over. So thank you, Hope, as we head to Andre. This is Andre Shander, and I would like to thank you for this opportunity to bring an update from the mission field and encourage you in faith, share stories of hope, and challenge us to trust in God, for He is good and His mercy endures forever. It has been a difficult and unexpected year for all of us here in Canada. We all face deeper fears this year related to the pandemic, food shortage, and lack of supplies, job loss, travel restrictions, online communication, and etc. Were we prepared for all this? For shortage of supplies, food lines, masks, self-isolation, social distancing, online church? What about our faith during this time? I hope your homes and hearts were filled with faith and prayer. As followers of Christ, we ought to keep faith at all times. That is what makes us different from other people. We are not alone. Our Lord and Savior is with us every moment of our life. He will never leave you. This November, my family will be celebrating fourth year in Canada. And I am so thankful for the abundance of God's blessing and provision that He has made for all of us. To live in Canada is a dream for many. And we are sharing this dream together with you. So our hearts are filled with gratitude for what He has done for us. And may we always keep that in our hearts. May it be our faith song to God. And now I would like to share with you the message that God has laid on my heart to build faith. The Gospel of Luke chapter 8 verses 22 to through 25 tells us a story how Jesus calms the storm. And I would like us to remind that story and share some points that I believe will be encouraging for all of us. First of all, when Jesus tells the disciples that they have a mission, that He would like them to go across the lake, He did not tell them why they were going there. And disciples in obedience followed Jesus, His plan. And getting on that boat with Jesus, we have to remember that those were experienced fishermen who, who have handled different situations and storms on the lake in their life. This one, they were afraid of. This one brought a fear factor in their life more than ever before. Even though Jesus was with them there, He had a beautiful sleep, but not them. They could not handle that reality. The pressure from the outside was so strong that it caused more fear, even fear for their lives. They were afraid they were going to die. But there Jesus was right there. And the moment that they could not handle anymore, they wake him up. And then Jesus calms the storm. I would like to make several points for us that we could look into our lives. As we set on our journey with Jesus, at first time, probably, we didn't know him personally enough. And as the disciples, we would said the same thing. Who is this man? Because remember, this is, was their reaction after the calming of the storm. The disciples asked themselves, who is this man that even the wind and the water obeys him? Later, after several more instances of God's glory, the same man will answer this question, just like you and me did. He is the Son of God. Because only the Son of God could have such a peaceful sleep in the middle of the storm. But what about disciples? What question did Jesus ask them? As fear overwhelmed, disciples were in awe looking at their master. He didn't rebuke them, but he asked them, where is your faith? 
as if faith was something that they were supposed to use in their daily life, not just in the special sacred services or ceremony. Faith all of a sudden become something that needed to be applied in our daily living, because that's how they could overcome. And that's how the Word of God is reached the others. You see, Jesus was on a mission. His purpose of crossing that lake wasn't only teach disciples a lesson, but also He was on a mission to rescue and deliver that man on the other side of the lake. The faith that God gives us is not only meant for us to be practiced in our personal life for our own good and benefit, but it needs to be directed at others. Because this is how God's faith is being built and planted in other lives. This year was an amazing year. This year was a year of faith. I believe that many of us have looked into our hearts and thanked God every day for the faith that He planted in us. Because with that faith, we were able to overcome, to keep our families together, to trust God with our lives, our family, children, our ministry, and still serve Him and still plant faith in other people. Because this is how faith is shared. When we, being pressed, going through the times of fear, are able to say, our Savior Lord is with us and He is helping us to go through this storm. And we are able to look into these circumstances and see the needy people on the other side. The faith is what's going to take you through this time and you will see your results. You will see salvation. You will see deliverance of the Lord and you will see blessing because this is the time that requires us to exercise our faith in a different manner. Not only on Sundays, but every day in our daily living, trusting the Lord because He desires to bless you. Because He is with you every moment of your life. Please, let us be grateful for faith, for the gift of faith that we received. And let us not undermine it, but exercise it and direct it to other people that are around us. Because they need it. Because that's what makes you different. That faith that is in you. That plants faith in other people when you go out. And now with great joy, I'd like to share with you the reports from our mission field. It's been a greatest privilege for us to continue serving God under these circumstances. And this year in Belarus, the country that is going through political unsettled changes that requires a lot of help, we are planting faith into young generation. Six summer camps. The camps that target unreached areas where we are planting the seeds of faith into the hearts of community through their children, into families, through food packets that we are reaching out and following up afterwards, bringing fruit. Last year, two girls that went through our camps have received Jesus Christ and committed their lives to serving and this year went as leaders. There is growth in discipleship. We see how God is transforming that nation and raising new leaders through our camps. And this is the story that we got from Svetlana. Svetlana is a widow with six kids. Her husband died in the war in the East. Today she lives in Kyiv in a one-room apartment with her six kids. And her only survival was school. Yes, her kids going to school every day got two meals for free. That's how she made her living. With the pandemic coming to her door in March, as Ukraine shut down all schools for the end of the year, her family, as well as 35,000 other families, altogether 6.5 million people were left with no food, with no food free available food from schools. Those families hit hunger very hard. So when our volunteers came to Svetlana, she was in tears. When they knocked on her door, she 
opened it with tears because she had no food. The kids were asking for food. And when, I, when we asked her, so Svetlana, why didn't you tell other people that you have a need? You know what she answered? She said that every time when I ask for help, my neighbors, and people that know me, tell me my kids are my problem. Basically, there is no one to turn to. So why are you here? So that gave an opportunity for our volunteers to share the gospel. And today, Svetlana is getting food. Her kids are doing well. And the faith was planted in her heart through a simple, kind gift of food bag. And that opened opportunity for the gospel to reach her heart. Another project was in the village of Lasatin, where we met with a couple with three children and no water. Imagine yourself living with no water. How can you cook? How about your garden? How about your kids keeping clean? I believe putting that well for that family brought such a result that this year that couple got baptized. Their older daughter, Anya, is leading a Bible class in her home. And the latest report that we received from Ukraine in the month of October, 146 fires in the eastern Ukraine destroyed 11 communities. 250 houses were burned down. 1,500 people evacuated. Our churches in the area are asking for help. What are they doing? Why are they doing it? Because nobody else is doing. They are salvaging whatever is left and rebuilding homes, helping people winterizing their facilities, and they are asking for help to do the heating. Because the gas lines are destroyed. There is no more gas lines coming to those communities. But there is electricity. And with electrical heat, they can survive this winter. It's nice to give a blanket to a person in the house. But the person who doesn't have a house, he need, they need a roof over, the, over their head. And I believe that with Jesus, what seems right now for us as a dark and impossible, 250 houses burned down, 1,500 people left without homes. How can anybody help them? I can tell you that with faith in God, we can help them. We can make difference in their life if we follow our Savior's path. He has opened up that mission field for us for a reason. He is with us and He wants us to continue to be on our journey because there are people over there on the other side that need you and me. They need to hear of your faith and mine. Because the lady in eastern Ukraine, her testimony was this. Today I have faith in God because of you. Because you came and you told me that you are willing to help. No one else came. The government never sent anybody here. We are left to ourselves. But you coming here today filled my heart with hope. And I thank you for that. So I want to tell you that God wants to use each one of us to plant that hope and faith in other people. Allow Him. Don't be overwhelmed by fear. But let faith in you produce faith in others. And may you be strong. And if you don't have it, then I pray that the Lord will grant you that faith today. That you will be strong in your ways, following Him, realizing that He has not left you. But He has called you out. And He is asking you, where is your faith today? God bless you. Thank you to Andre Shander for providing that video for us. And I was encouraged the first time I saw it, and it's wonderful to hear again of what God is doing in the Ukraine and Belarus, regardless of the tension that is there and the pandemic as it's affecting families. We don't realize how something, our world here is interrupted, but not to the degree that it is in other places in the world. And I didn't realize that schools fed the children there in the Ukraine. And when families no longer could send their children to school, many of them grew hungry because they just didn't have the food 
available for their own families. And so the church is responding, the church there in the Ukraine and God's people. And that's, this is the challenge to faith. You know, what, where is our faith? I was thinking about that this week. And it's an interesting, interesting thing to consider. Where is our faith? I hear stories about how God has done incredible things, and it all stems out of someone's faith or some faith that some people held. But as we think of that story, we read it out of Mark chapter 4 because it offered a little more detail. But in Luke uh, chapter uh, 8, there we see Jesus respond with, where is your faith? You know, I, as I consider the situation, being afraid seems pretty normal. You know, you, you head out. It's supposed to be a routine trip across the lake. A storm blows in. The, the, the winds pick up. The waves begin to pour into the boat. You know, in my mind, I see these men scurrying. One grabs the rudder. A couple more might pull down the sail. Others are grabbing whatever they've got, cupping their hands to get the water out of the boat. And they're realizing this is a futile activity because the water is coming in quicker than we can get it out. Who wouldn't be afraid in a situation like that? I've been in Georgian Bay and the water, the waves picked up in our bow rider. And as Kath Joe sat in front of me in the, in, on the seats in the bow, holding hope on her lap, I watched a wave wash over the, the bow of the boat, over her shoulders, rush down the center of the boat to the back. And I thought, we're going down. <laughs> this is how it's going to happen. I remember that. Who wouldn't be afraid in a situation like that? And you know, when we face circumstances, storms of life, it's, it's almost natural to panic, isn't it? You know, if you were to get a phone call of a loved one that was in a terrible accident, wouldn't you panic? Wouldn't you be afraid? Wouldn't you be concerned? Or if your child, like ours, uh, when Hannah was a little baby, just a few weeks old, stopped breathing, yes you would panic. Or if someone uh, in your family grabbed their chest, fell to the ground, you would be concerned. Was Jesus saying, don't panic? Was he rebuking their emotional response? I really don't think that was it at all. I think he was just asking them, why are you afraid? What, where is your faith? And I think Jesus realize for all the time they spent with him have you not seen how circumstances can be different because of God because of me Jesus was in the boat and when I think of it and consider all of the places in the Bible where God's people saw God move they believed and I think God expects his people to believe to have faith why because we have him we have him with us and so God expects us to believe in him, to have faith that he will turn our circumstances around maybe by his mighty power, regardless of how he does what he does, he is with us. And that is why we don't have to be afraid, but we can believe. We can believe that God will help us through our financial difficulty when we don't have the money that we need to, to pay our bills. I believe that we can trust in God when we see a loved one or a child uh, living in a way that is destructive to them and we're concerned that we can believe that God is going to do something. We don't know what, but he will do something. Or if we're sick or get a bad, bad, bad report from the doctor, that we can say, God, I don't know what my future holds, but I know you hold me and I put my trust and faith in you. And he gives us peace. We can believe it's because of faith. And Jesus still says today, why are you afraid? Where is your faith? We have reason to be afraid, but are we trusting the Lord? This week, something happened to me um, that was completely unexpected, and some of you already know of it. You know, we've always, we've raised our children to believe in God and to pray. Pray uh, when things are good, and also to pray when things are bad. And whenever something would pop up, we would say, well, let's pray about that. Or, you know what, I'm going to be praying about this. And, and our children are familiar with that, as prayer is central and trusting in God is central 
to our lives. Monday night, as I was sitting on the bed with Kathy Jo, she is reviewing the notes. She keeps notes, you know, for what, what people would like for Christmas, what we've bought, what we've got left to buy for, where we are at the budget. We're going over all of this. And I was just kind of leaning back on the wall and I thought, I'm going to sit up a bit. And as I just went like this, just moved my head up, just my shoulders shrugged a bit. I instantly said, something just happened. I didn't know what it was. I felt pressure in my neck. I had a hard time breathing. I felt weird. Do I sit up? Do I lay down? Do I stand up? What do I do? I, do I drink something? Not drink something? I couldn't understand. What is going on here? So I thought, I, maybe I'll walk. I walked into the bathroom going, oh, I have an Apple Watch. It can at least t give me an ECG to just sit, tell me what's going on inside. And I, I did my ECG and it says, uh, can't do it because your heart rate's too fast. It was 160, then it was 138, then it's up and down and up and down. And I caught it finally and it says, oh, you have AFib. You're an AFib. Uh, you should consider talking to your doctor. <laughs> I, I kind of laughed uh, as I read, you should consider talking to your doctor. I'm going, I'm considering going to the ER is what I'm considering. And uh, I went up and in 20 minutes, I'm wired up and all this stuff's going on and Kathy Joe couldn't be there. Brady left, Brady took me up. And, and I'm sitting there and you know, they got wires everywhere and this and that. And, and the doctor comes in, he says, okay, you have three options here. And uh, I said, well, do what you want to do. What, what do you think is done? Okay, we're going to put you to sleep. We're going to shock your heart back into rhythm. I said, okay, good, let's do it. So he says, let's get you some IV and get you settled. And then we'll do it in about 20, 30 minutes. So, so in between, you know, as people coming in and out and putting more patches on me and all kinds of stuff and tearing it off here and putting it back on and tearing it off and putting it back on. It was, it was a lot of fun. And uh, I'm, I'm texting in between, you know. I don't want them to be afraid at home. You know, I'm trying to calm their fears. And Kath Joe says, what's going on? I'm praying for you. Then I hear Emma says, mom says, you know, your heart's acting weird. <laughs> I'm praying for you. Hannah says, mom told me, I'm praying, we're praying for you. Hope you, love you daddy, praying for you, you know. And uh, messages go out and people are praying for me. And in that waiting period, I felt a change. And I said to the nurse as she comes in to put another big patch here and one on my back so that they can give me that shock. And I says, I feel better. She goes, yeah, your heart rate's still quite up. It's down a little bit, but it's still too high. And keeps going, keeps going. The doctor comes in, he goes, hmm, let's, let's check his sinus rhythm one more time. And he comes back and he says, ah, your heart went back. It's a normal rhythm now, r normal sinus rhythm, he says. And so, of course, the evening went on. They monitored me a little bit and sent me home. And, you know, as I went into the ER and I'm laying down, I'm going, I don't know what's going on. So I said, thank you, Lord. You're with me. I don't know how many times as I face whatever comes, I just feel, thank you, Lord, you're with me. And instantly that thought gives me peace. You're with me. And I know that as people prayed, what were they praying? They were praying, God, his heart's not acting properly. Can you get it back? That's what they're praying. You see, they're telling me that, you know, you're going to have to do this and do that. And I said, okay. But guess what? I believe God answered prayer. Some people say, well, that's coincidental because that happens all the time. Yes, it does happen all the time. But when people pray, God answers prayer. Nicky Gumbel says, he says, coincidences happen. And when people pray more, more, coinc more coincidences happen. He's saying that, you know, sometimes we discredit God. And we shouldn't. God is at work. And I believe that God certainly answered prayer. And people expected it. And God expects us to be people who have faith because God wants us to respond to our circumstances, believing that he is a God that can change the reality of our circumstances. He will certainly be with us. He will see us through. And maybe he'll even do a miracle in the process. But God is good enough to do it. Where is your faith? That's what Jesus says. Where is your faith? I believe Jesus was saying, you guys woke me up for this. Why didn't you deal with this? Where's your faith? Why are you afraid? And you know, when I think of it that way, I thought, wow, Jesus expected them to have faith in this. 
then he does the same for us. You know, no matter what we are facing in our lives, and there's always something, isn't there? There's always something to face. That we don't have to be afraid. We will respond emotionally. There will be those moments of tears and fears and, and cries and all those things. But we don't have to be lost in our fear and out of control because God has it in control as we put our faith in him. Where is your faith? Don't let doubt rob you of what God is willing to do in your life, of his presence in your life. Don't believe wrongly. Bad theology or no theology, both mislead us. And we can't let that from happening because God wants to be with us in our circumstances and reveal himself and reveal his power for our lives. Don't be lost in fear. Trust in him. He is good. Have faith. God is good. Maybe you have a need today. I want to believe with you for that. You notice that it wasn't only for us, as Andre had mentioned, that our faith is important. It's because there's other people around that need to see our faith in action. And I believe right now in this world, God's people need to be acting in faith. And the world needs to see God responding. And we have a wonderful privilege Take the opportunity to not only pray and believe for yourself and your circumstances and for others, but allow others to see Jesus in it. Maybe you have a need today. We're going to pray for Andre Shanders, who made the report, who's traveling now and on his way to the Ukraine. Pray that God is with him and with those people there uh, in the Ukraine as he goes to minister. But maybe you have a need today. I want to believe with you that God will move in your circumstances, whatever they may be. Let's pray. Father, I thank you today, Lord, that you are so incredible. I think of Jesus, you in that boat, asleep in the midst of a dire moment. They're gonna, they think they're going to die, those disciples with you. And God, <laughs> you're at absolute peace. Thank you, Lord. It reveals to us the peace we can have in the midst of our dire circumstances. But it's so interesting that you expected them to have faith and that, Lord, they didn't, even though they knew you and experienced you. And, Lord, as, as we get to know you more and experience you more and get more familiar with you, that, Lord, our faith will grow. And may our faith grow, Lord. I pray, dear Father God, that as we face our circumstances, maybe it's a loved one, Lord, that is... Lord, living in a destructive pattern, and we're concerned for them. We ask in the name of Jesus Christ for you to intervene in their life. Father, we don't even know how to pray for some circumstances, but God, you know what they need. And we are asking, Lord, that you would move right now. And as people pray for loved ones, for family members, for friends, we agree in prayer with them that, God, you will do something miraculous in the life of that person that they are so burdened for. In the name of Jesus, we pray. For those that, Father God, are facing uh, serious health issues, maybe. <clears throat> Father, we want to agree in prayer with them that, God, you're going to take them by the hand and lead them through in the name of Jesus Christ. Even do miracles right now in Jesus' name in the lives of people, Lord, who are asking, God, have mercy. Help me in my circumstance right now. God, would you move there? Would you let them know that you are near? And Father God, may by faith we see you change their reality. In the name of Jesus, we pray and we thank you for this. We pray for Andre, who's traveling, Lord. He's away from his family right now in Canada. I just pray you keep him safe during this time, Lord, as COVID is rampant in the U.S. and the Ukraine where he's traveling right now. I pray you keep him protected and safe, Father God, from all harm and that he will not get ill. And that, Father God, that you would, you would touch his life so that he can be a blessing to those that he ministers to. In the name of Jesus, we pray. We pray for uh, our missionary family that we're supporting, this pastor and his wife, Andre and Julia Shaders in the Ukraine. With all the unrest in, the, in Belarus, Lord God, and the danger, Father, we pray for them right now. Lord, help them to be bold in the Holy Spirit. Help them to be filled with your presence, Lord, to be able to speak your truth in grace and in love, Father God, that many people will find the hope that you offer to us, Lord Jesus. And I thank you, Father God. Let people be saved. Let them be healed. Let that nation be healed, we pray. 
And Father God, bring healing to our land. In the U.S. and in Canada, Lord, we need you here. And we ask, dear God, that by your mercy you would move among us, I pray. Thank you that you are faithful to us, Lord. And we put our hope and our trust completely in you. Help us, dear Lord, to grow in our faith. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, I want to thank you for joining us today. We appreciate you and the time that you've taken to spend with us as a part of our online church community. May God bless you. I hope and pray that God's touched your life today. But if you should have any questions or would like to talk, we're going to have me pray with you. Just uh, contact me by phone or email that you see there below. I'd love to hear from you. Well, we're going to finish up our in-person service at this time. So farewell for now. I hope you have a wonderful week. And I look forward to seeing you again soon next week. So God bless till we meet again. Bye for now.